Here's our next example to work out. Use the definition of the derivative, which means use the definition of the derivative. Remember, anytime you read the phrase, use the definition of the derivative, you should interpret that as use the definition of the derivative to find the equation of the line tangent. So we're going to find the equation of a tangent line. Tangent to the curve y equals 8 over t. This is not a function of x, it's a function of t. So you're, it's certainly plausible to have functions of other variables than simply x. You should get used to that notation. So we might use some little different notation here, but again, that should become part of your mental furniture. So uh, find the equation of the line tangent to y equals 8 over t when t equals 2. Right, so what are we asked to find? We're asked to find the equation of the tangent line. So we know y minus y zero is equal to slope times x minus x zero. Except now we don't, we don't want to use x. We want to use t. So y minus y zero is equal to slope times t minus t zero. There's nothing magic about using x or y. We could just as easily have called this w is equal to 8 over t, in which case this would have been w minus w0. So the specific letters we choose to represent the variables are irrelevant. All right, so let's continue on here. What do we have? We have t equal 2. The only piece we know of this is t equals 2. Do you recall how we find the y-coordinate? Right, We find that the y-coordinate by you substitute t equals 2 into the original function. This function has some graph somehow, and we're given t equals 2, and we're asked to find the equation of that tangent line, which means we need to know the coordinates of that point lying on the curve. And to know the, point, the coordinates of a point on the curve, you take the given t value, substitute to here to find the associated y value. All right, so let's see what we have here. Uh, if we have y is equal to 8 over 2 is equal to 4 when t is equal to 2. When t is equal to 2, we have y is equal to 8 over 2 is 4. So the point we have that lies on the curve and the point we have that lies on the line is 2 comma 4. So the t coordinate goes here and the y coordinate goes here. So far, we have y minus the 4 is equal to, don't know yet, x minus, the, I'm sorry, t minus the 2. So our task now is to find the slope of the tangent line. The slope of the tangent line is the derivative. The derivative evaluated when t equals 2. So we need to find the derivative of this as a function of t, and then evaluate that as the value t equals 2. So let's see if we can put all this together. So we don't have f of a, a t. We don't have f. We have y. So let's use this notation. We can write y prime. If you don't want to write that, you could also write dy dt. That would certainly be sufficient. This is the derivative of y with respect to t, or simply dy dt, or simply the derivative. This is y prime, simply the derivative. So whichever notation strikes your fancy, and you should get used to using the various notations. In this case, let's use y prime. This is equal to the limit as delta, not delta x, delta t goes to zero. We're not using delta x, we're using delta t goes to zero of uh, f of, well let's say we want y of t plus delta t minus y of t over delta t. Now, how do you find y of something? Well, you take 8 divided by the something. So y of that great big mess is equal to 8 over that great big mess. So we have 8 over t plus delta t minus y of t. We know that's 8 over t. All over delta t. 
Now, direct substitution gives 8 over t minus 8 over t. That gives you 0 divided by 0. Direct substitution is 0 divided by 0. So do some algebra, simplify, try again. We have seen this. We recognize this footprint. We need to subtract these functions, or sorry, sorry, subtract these fractions to create a single fraction in the numerator, single fraction in denominator, and then multiply by reciprocal to, to simplify that complex fraction. So our first task is to combine these into a single fraction by getting a common denominator. The common denominator is, I'm going to get a little more space here, The common denominator is just multiply those together. T plus delta T over T, uh, times T. And then, again, this is the cross-multiply rule. So this is 8T minus 8 times T plus delta T. So this is a problem type that we worked out in Chapter 1. When you need to subtract these fractions, you form the common denominator, the common denominator is the two pieces multiplied together. So this is the cross multiply rule. 8 times t goes here, and 8 times t plus delta t goes here. And this is subtraction in between. We're going to have to distribute. Now simplify that great big gigantic mess we just made. This is 8t distribute minus 8t minus 8 delta t over... This is all over this, t plus delta t times t, and then all that's great big over, delta t over 1. So we've created this large complex fraction. This is delta t over 1. Those cancel. And now I'm going to multiply by the reciprocal. Multiply by the reciprocal. So this is the limit, delta t goes to zero. What's left here is we have this multiplied by, I'm going to multiply by the reciprocal. The reciprocal is one over delta t, that's the reciprocal. What do we have left? These have canceled out, we're left with negative eight delta t over t plus delta t times t. Simplify and then try again. Whenever you get zero divided by zero, you do a boatload of algebra, simplify, and try again. The delta t's cancel, and you're left with delta t is going to zero. What do we have left? We're left with negative eight over t plus delta t times t. Now, at long last, let delta t go to zero. I can stop writing lim. This is negative 8 over t plus zero is simply t. This is negative 8 over t squared. Negative 8 over t squared. That is the derivative of this original given function. Now, you don't substitute that mess into the don't know yet. We need to evaluate the derivative at the given value for t. At the given domain value, substitute that into the derivative and evaluate. So our slope we want is this value evaluated when t equals 2. All right, now I'm going to erase some of this and steal some space. So we have, I want this expression evaluated when t equals 2. There is a way to write that. There's a, there's a notation for everything in mathematics, and the calculus is loaded with it. If you take an expression and put it in brackets, and then in the lower right-hand corner here, I write t equals 2. The way you read this is negative 8 over t squared. This expression, you read this as evaluated when, evaluated when, or evaluated at, or evaluated using. The specific word is not that important. It's the notion. 
this expression evaluated when t equals 2. So this is what we're looking for, and this actually is going to end up being what we know we're looking for. What are we looking for here? We're looking for the slope, right? So we know the slope is going to be that derivative evaluated at t equals 2. So what we have is the slope is negative 8 over 2 squared. That's negative 8 over 4. That's negative 2. That goes in here, and it's all over but the shallow. So we have y minus 4 is equal to, there's the slope, x minus, uh, t, sorry, t, t minus. What was our value? t minus 2. And then express that in slope intercept form, and you're out. So y minus 4 is equal to negative 2t, be careful, right, plus 4, right, plus 4. Add the 4 across, and so what we end up with is negative 2t plus 8. So what do we do? We use the definition of the derivative to find the equation of the line tangent to this curve when t equals 2. And our solution, y equals negative 2t plus 8.